Okay, so uh, for those of you that are still struggling a bit with uh, positive and negative numbers, this video is for you. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a hack, a little bit of a kind of uh, way to remember the rules for positive and negative numbers. And I've done this video, um, uh, basically it's the same video, and I've done this before in other videos to kind of go over these rules because it's such a common weak area for students. And if you don't get this fixed, then you're going to continue to make uh, little errors with positive and negative numbers, and that's going to really just sink your answer. You might understand everything else uh, that's going on, but if you are still, uh, you know, insecure or not confident or absolutely like uh, certain in your answers, well, then you're going to have a tough time in math. And what we want to do is fix this once and for all. And again, uh, I've made uh, other videos on uh, the rules for positive and negative numbers. Matter of fact, one of my first big videos that I've made, uh, well, I think it's maybe over 10 years ago, is the rules for positive and negative numbers. And uh, I think that has well over a million views. So it's definitely a topic that uh, people search. So if you are struggling with it, do not be discouraged because a lot of people uh, struggle with positive and negative numbers. They're easy. Uh, to remember, but they're also easy to confuse. So the purpose of this video is to get you unconfused and walk away uh, from this video being like, okay, now I remember this, now I got this, uh, because this is important stuff uh, for your success in mathematics. So we're going to get to this little hack here in a second. By the way, I'm going to be really focusing in on adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers, but we'll quickly review multiplication and division uh, as that is an easy uh, rule to remember this. So we'll talk about all that in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following uh, the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, I'm going to be launching pre-calculus. I have Algebra 2 as well. Um, I don't know if I said that or not. But anyways, I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. Uh, I'm very excited about that because all my courses take me years to build. I, I mean, I have massive amounts of instructional videos. Uh, I teach how to solve like literally thousands of problems. So my courses are not short tutorials. It's very serious math product. Anybody who's serious truly wants to learn this material, I think you'll be uh, well impressed with my courses. But um uh, beyond those courses, I have uh, several courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, CLEP, ACCUPLACER, ALEX, uh, teacher certification exam, uh, like the Praxis uh, or nursing school entrance or the ASVAB going into military, all those exams uh, have a lot of math on them. If you don't do well in the math sections, you don't do well on the exam. So we don't want that to happen. So if you are reviewing or uh, getting ready for one of those exams, just go to my website, and you can see my full course catalog and it can help you out. Now, if I don't have your exam, drop me a line and I will help you out the best I can. Um, I also do a lot with uh, independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then lastly, I help those of you that are struggling in your current math courses. Now, if you're serious about improving in math, and I assume that you are by watching this video, then I must tell you this little secret, okay? Over decades of teaching math, it's just critical, absolutely. It's just something that I've seen uh, through decades, okay, not years, decades, is that those students who really put in an effort, okay, and are consistently taking great, excellent notes, you know, they always do very well. And the reverse is true. Those students who like to do what I did way back in the 1980s when I was a student, which was what? Well, not pay attention to the teacher. And when the teacher looked at me, I would just write and scribble scratch. And then I would get back to my little notes to my friends saying, hey, what are we doing? Uh, on the weekend, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, we didn't have any uh, internet back in those days. We couldn't text, so we actually had to write and uh, be very disruptive in class. But uh, listen, I get it, right? I certainly wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. Um, but I figured that out later in college that in order to be successful, you got to actually pay attention to the teacher, and you got to be taking great math notes. Not on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Every day you're in class, okay? Every day you're in class, you got to be paying attention because there's too much information you can miss. All right, enough about note taking. You got to take great notes. But as you're improving, I offer uh, uh, excellent comprehensive notes to include pre algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry that could help you out as you get your own notes together. You can find the links 
uh, to those notes in the description of this video. All right, let's get to this problem here. Now, I'm going to do several problems uh, to kind of make my point here. But I have 6 pl uh, plus negative 10. Uh, what is that equal to? Well, uh, let's get to this now. Okay, but first, let me go ahead and... Um, go over this little like um, hack. So basically, I want you to think of working with positive and negative numbers uh, in two groups. Okay, we have multiplication and division, and then we have addition. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to take all subtraction problems and we're going to turn them into addition problems. So uh, let's just see how this uh, how this um, is going to work. Okay. So let's deal with multiplication and division here real quick. The bottom line is this, this right here is we're going to treat the same. This is the same rule, and it's super easy, okay? And here's the, uh, the rule. If the signs are the same, uh, the signs are the same, the answer is positive. So if the signs are different, then the answer is negative, okay? And we're already we're going to take care of, of two um, uh, operations when it comes to this. So, for example, negative 3 times uh, negative 10, uh, what do we have here? Negative and negative, same signs, so this is going to be positive. All right, if this was, uh, let's do a division uh, problem, okay? And let's do this right here. How about uh, negative 9 divided by a positive 3? Signs are different, so my answer is going to be negative, negative 3. Now, that would be the same way for multiplication. So here, right off the bat, you know, this is uh, good stuff, easy to remember, hopefully, you know, like, hey, for both multiplication and division, this is the rule. Okay, same signs, answer is positive. So that means if the signs are different, answer is negative. If you can remember that, then you're going to be, you know, 50% there with your positive and negative uh, number rules. Now, addition and subtraction is where a lot of students uh, uh, get confused. Okay, they have difficulty with this, and they kind of guess sometimes when uh, they're unsure. So uh, we're going to learn the rule for adding here in just one second. I'm going to give you this little hack here uh, to really kind of um, easily remember how to add positive and negative numbers. And then again, we'll talk very briefly on how we convert negative numbers uh, or no, oh, I'm sorry, subtraction problems into addition problems. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's take this uh, initial problem here, 6 plus negative 10, okay? 6 plus negative 10. Now, the first thing I want you to remember when you're doing any positive and negative number um, problem is to, if you're unsure, okay, if you are unsure, I want you to just stop and think of an easy example. So for example, let's just say you're trying to figure out negative uh, 240, uh, plus negative uh, 31. So let's say these numbers are kind of bothering you because they're kind of big. Just stop and just think, what if what if I had negative 2 plus negative 3? Because the way I figured this out, if you can kind of just stop and get your brain settled here and then get back to your actual problem, it's going to help you out. So don't try to remember the rules with bigger numbers if you're stuck. Kind of go to a simpler model. Um, get the rule right in your head, and then go forth. So that's the uh, first part of this hack. The second part of this little technique that I'm going to show you is that I love to use the model of money when we're dealing with uh, adding and subtracting positive negative numbers. Okay? So when you have a positive number, that's like you have money. Okay? So right here, this six, let's just think of this as having six dollars. Okay, having six dollars in our pocket and our bank account, whatever the case is. Now, what should we think of a negative ten as? Well, I want you to think of a, as a negative ten dollars as like a bill or like you owe. Okay, all right. If you ever look at a bank statement or something like that and you have negative, that means uh, that's debt. Okay, this is you know you don't have that money. You owe this money. All right. So that's the first, this is like the, the main thing I want you to think of positive and negative numbers. If you've been struggling with them, this is the way I want you to think of these type of numbers. A positive number, think of, think of it as you have money. And a negative number, think of it as a uh, bill, something that you owe. All right, so with that being uh, stated, let's say you have $6 in your pocket. 
but then you owe $10. What is your financial situation here? Okay, what is the result? Well, let's say you owe this to your best friend. If you give them your $6, well, what is the result of that? Well, your, your debt level goes down to uh, four, right? Okay, it goes down to negative four. So when you have six minus 10 or six plus a negative 10, okay, most of you out there probably know you need to subtract, all right? So it's going to be four, but is it going to be positive or negative four? Okay, so when the signs are different, you do need to subtract, but what? how do we know the sign? Well, if you think of this in terms of money, like, ooh, I have bigger debt than I do money, so I still owe $4. That's the way to think about it, okay? So this is the way that I want you to think of positive and negative numbers, um, and it's gonna help you out. So let's do another example. What if I have negative six plus negative 10? What's my financial situation? Oh boy, well, listen, I already owe this person $6, okay? I owe this person six bucks, and now I got another friend of mine, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about you too. I owe you uh, $10, so all together, I owe my friends uh, collectively uh, $16. So negative six plus negative 10 is negative 16. Okay. So hopefully you can kind of see how this works. And let's do another problem. What if I have $10 and, but I owe my best friend $6. Okay. Well, listen, I could pay, uh, that person off, but I'll still have $4 left. Okay. So you can see you're going to subtract, but which sign it's going to be positive because this is bigger, but I want you to stop trying to use just straight rote memorization. Rote memorization is just like you're just trying to remember the rules exactly. Use a model that will um, kind of help you with this uh, in a real uh, world model for positive and negative numbers. Um, an excellent one is money. Okay? I think this is the best one that uh, you, know, you can really relate to. Okay, All right, so now that's addition. Let's talk a little bit about subtraction. So what if I have, uh, let's see here, six uh, minus 10. Six minus 10, uh, what is that equal to? Well, what we're gonna do when it comes to positive and negative numbers, we're gonna sub change subtraction prompts into addition prompts. So this is gonna become six, okay? We're gonna change this to a, an addition prompt. And when I do that, okay, uh, what ends up happening, I'm gonna put my negative right here and I'm gonna assign it to that 10. Okay, so six minus 10, this problem is equivalent, here, let me do this right here, six minus 10, as what we call plus negative, okay, plus negative. So six minus 10, just go, oh, okay, uh, I see the subtraction, plus negative. So six plus negative 10 is equivalent to the problem six minus 10. So I want you to take, let's kind of back this up a little bit here. Okay, so what I want you to do is to rewrite subtraction problems as addition problems. So this is going to be 6 plus a negative 10, okay? And now we can just go back to our addition rules. I'm like, oh, I have 6 bucks. I owe someone uh, $10, so that's negative 4. So 6 minus 10 is a negative 4, okay? All right, now uh, let's do one other thing here. How about uh, 6 minus, let's do negative 6 minus a negative 10. Okay, so this one has a couple things going on here. So uh, this subtraction operator, this minus and minus 10, in math, this little minus sign is uh, also known as like the opposite. Okay, it's so opposite, it's a negative sign, it's a subtraction uh, operator. But uh, 6 minus and minus 10, well, how do I handle that? Well, let's go ahead and go negative 6 plus negative of a negative 10, right? So that's the, the first thing I want you to do. So what is the opposite of a negative 10? What's a negative of a negative 10? Or a negative times a negative? Well, the signs are the same. It's positive. So this is positive. Now, this negative or opposite of a negative 10 turns this into a positive 10. So this is negative 6 uh, plus 10, okay? So now, what's the situation? Well, I owe someone six bucks, but I have $10, so that's good. So I still have $4, so that's positive four. Okay, so I'm going to kind of wrap it up at this stage, okay? We talked about the rules for positive and negative numbers here. Uh, very brief, I mean, this is basically it. But, uh, you know, if you can kind of have a simple model, 
okay, like money, when it, and just kind of remember the rules, organize in your brain the various rules, you know, uh, in terms of, okay, I have one group, both multiplication and division, they're the same rule, okay, super easy, get that taken care of, and then, oh, okay, addition, uh, I'm going to um, I master this because I'm going to change subtraction problems into addition, I'll keep that money model in mind, then you're going to do fine, okay, you will just eventually get better and better at this, and then over time, you'll, um, you know, you'll just know these rules by heart, okay, but unfortunately, what a lot of students do is they don't, um, they continue to make uh, the same mistake over and over again. Making mistakes is is not bad, okay? It's not good, but it's not bad. But the idea here, uh, when you're learning anything, is when you make a mistake, you learn from the mistake, and then you improve. But if you keep making a mistake over and over and over and over and over and over again, you know, then something's wrong. You have to be monitoring yourself. Again, you know, uh, if you're serious about... Um, you know, learning math, I'm going to hope you are. If you're not serious about learning math, then you should expect uh, to be frustrated because mathematics is just, there's too much going on, okay? So that's no fun. If you're going to have to learn it, just go all in, okay, on it. In other words, take great notes, talk to your uh, teacher, you know, get as much help as you possibly can. And uh, then if you need additional help, uh, you know, go to uh, like, you know, take advantage of all these free resources on the internet, one of which is my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. Hopefully you'll become a subscriber. But I have tons of videos there, like over a thousand videos from basic to advanced math you can learn from. Okay, that's what they're there for. My passion is to teach math in a clear and understandable way. And then, of course, if you need something more additional beyond that, and you really want to take advantage of uh, my uh, you know, uh, teaching style and instruction, then you'll want to check out my full math help program. But the bottom line is this. You take control. Empower yourself to go figure out what you need to learn. Okay, your teacher is just can't like snap a finger and make things happen uh, for you. So if you're struggling, increase your efforts, okay, in an intelligent way by doing these things that I'm telling you here, and you're going to end up with a nice happy face with a mohawk at the end of your school year, probably with an A plus and a 100%. And your teacher's going to say, your teacher's going to be like, wow, you're pretty awesome. Matter of fact, I'm going to hire you for a tutor, and you'll make a lot of money during summer school when all those uh, students who weren't paying attention have to take, uh, you know, algebra over again. That's no fun. I used to teach summer school, and uh, nobody wants to be in school during summers. Uh, and obviously, you know, I don't have to explain that because it's just common sense. We want to kind of have a little time off for ourselves. Okay, well, I don't want to keep going on too many digressions, but if this video helped you out in some way, please consider smashing that like button. And again, hopefully you'll become a subscriber. Um, but with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.